Hey, hi everyone. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. This video is highly sensitive and highly emotional, and also the best part is highly informative as well. So I believe everyone will enjoy or everyone will completely watch the video. I highly request you, recommend you to watch this video completely. And also, I would like to know your comments, your thoughts, your views in the comment section. And welcome back to my lovely YouTube channel. I believe everyone is doing great. And today in this video, I'm going to share these doubts I too had in the initial days. And when I saw this video, when I had a chance to attend this event, the entire concept, also the things that we come across in the internet, in the Google, everything, everything we will come to know the exact scenario what is happening in uh, Palestine, in Gaza. And yeah, the, uh, the people who have taken this initiative to arrange this exhibition, they have done their best. And also in this video, you will come across the entire history of Palestine I would say and how Israeli and Palestinians have been uh, uh, have been moving on with this story so let us see in this video so alhamdulillah we had a chance to uh, attend this event in Kitchener City Hall it was conducted in Kitchener City Hall uh, it's like I have you have to take the bus board the bus from here our place to University of Waterloo and from the tram to we can go by tram to Kitchener City Hall there is a direct bus direct tram stop to Kitchener City Hall and yeah this this is an exhibition this is a great exhibition that has happened for awareness of people and you can see those paintings were from my friend Venus Al Zohari. She is in Insta as well and she has done the her best to give great awareness to this exhibition for the people who have been attending this event. And yeah and also uh, in this video uh, you will come across a great information so let's move on. first day of school. First, let's take a roll. Kelly? Here. Billy? Here. Sam, uh, Sammy, Sam, Samed, uh, um, Samada. Samada. Okay, to begin, let's discuss what makes us all unique and celebrate our diversity. Everyone come up and place a mark on where your family came from. My family came from Ireland. Who's next? Jennifer Green. United Kingdom. Fantastic. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay, who would like to go next? Okay, great. Lily, come on up. Your family's from Germany. Great. Thank you. Okay, Samida, your turn. Papa, where am I from? 
بابا تعالي شوي You're from Palestine. They call you from the bride of the thief. So what is settler colonialism and what is Zionism? Settler colonialism, to put it simply, it means that a country or a governing power that is more powerful wants to go to a, 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 go to a land and take over that land by replacing the existing population that is indigenous to that land with the population of their own, right? So that is what Israel did to Palestine. They came, they took out all the Palestinians or they had the intention to remove all Palestinians and replace it with their own that's what Zionism is, right? So it's a national home for all Jews is another term that you often use when defining Zionism, right? So when, when Zionism was created, there were a lot of other countries that were, in, that were considered before they picked Palestine to be Israel. Yes. So I think that is also something we need to consider when you keep in mind that Zionism does not equal Judaism whatsoever. Now let's look at defining apartheid. So apartheid is simply separation, it's segregation, it's separating people based on their race, based on their ethnicity, based on their, um, on their religion, right? In Palestine, there is apartheid. You might have seen pictures of this wall before. This is called the apartheid wall. And it runs through along the border of the West Bank, which is the Palestinian territory within so-called Israel, and it runs through parts of the inside of it and also along the edge of it as well. So even where that wall does not exist, there is still apartheid in Palestine. Because apartheid is not only where the wall is, it is segregation between Arabs and non-Arabs all across Israel, right? So even if you go, for example, to the beach, there is an Arab side and there's a, there's a uh, non-Arab side, right? So it's segregation across the entire country. So now we can get into the history. So let's look here. This is kind of a simple map showing you Palestine over time. From before 1946 until present day Palestine. So before 1946, the entire country was considered Palestine. It was under British mandate, but it was still considered Palestine. These white areas that you see here were Jewish owned land, but they were not considered Israel. After 1947, uh, 1947 um, the UN created a partition plan where they split up the country into Israel, which is the white parts here, and then Palestine. 
And then, in 1948, the Nakba happened, and Malak will describe that um, a very significant day in detail, and that's when Israel was created, in 1948. From 1949 till 1967, the state of Israel continued to swallow up more and more Palestinian land until it became what we see today, where it is almost completely Israeli land and only minimal land that is fully Palestinian. And as you can see from this map here, this their, proper, their, uh, their land goes through the Palestinian land as well. So there's not a specific area amongst here where it is large enough to say that all of this is Palestine, and all of this is their land. And why did they do that? It's so that they can not allow for a sense of community or a real sense of a Palestinian state to exist. It is for breaking up families. The apartheid wall is not only Israel claimed to have built the apartheid wall to protect itself from Palestinians, but in fact, it built the wall so that it can break up Palestinian neighborhoods. known as a catastrophe in English. This was the day when 750,000 Palestinians were kicked out of their homes. The Palestinians that had their homes were within their families were kicked overnight became stateless refugees. Many of these refugees had to go all over the globe, and we'll be showing that in a second. Now, Israel became an official state in 1948 after the So as I said, this map illustrates how so many people in after the Mecca where people went. So as we can see from the top, people went to Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, some people even went to Egypt, but some other Palestinians went to other parts of Palestine, which at the time, they thought were safe, right? Obviously now we can see as so many people came to Gaza, although we know what's happening in Gaza right now. Our second most important date is in Nexi. In English, this is called the setback. This happened in 1967. This is when the Palestinians and other neighboring countries tried to get back the stolen land. However, unfortunately, they did lose to Israel. And it, it, unfortunately, Israel only took more and more and more land as Simon just described. Now, there are so many more significant dates between 1967 and the present day, but today we just want to focus on what's happening today in Gaza. Okay? So, now I'm sure everyone knows, or at least heard of what's happening in Gaza. It has been happening for more than 100 days. 30,000 Palestinians were killed. More than half of them were children. Gaza has been under the siege for 16 years. This is not something that happened in October 77. They control everything. Israel controls everything. They control, as Salman said, they have so many control, and nothing happens without their permission. Without their permission. You want to leave Gaza? You need their permission. You want to fish? You need their permission. Everything and anything is under Israel's control. So now you, as a student, as a parent, what can you do? The most important thing is educate yourself. Talk to people about it, right? Read about it, watch documentaries, hear stories, go talk to your grandmother. How was her story? How was your grandfather's story? What happened after, right? You have to maintain your heritage. You have to maintain your culture. And if you are just a pro-Palestinian, search, ask questions, right? And now I'm going to be going over some of the most significant symbols that Palestinians use as a way of resistance and resilience to this day. So this is our first symbol. Does anyone know who this little boy is? Yes. Correct. Good job. So this 10-year-old boy is Hakam. He represents um, a guy that were, was also kicked out of his home in 1948. He became a refugee. This represents all the childhoods that were stolen from Palestinians till this day. Children left with nothing but their clothes on and with their families, right? Now, does anyone want to tell me any observations that you can see from this picture? Why is it different? Yes. Good job. that our sailors used to use when they went fishing at the Mediterranean, right? 
Then our second is the olive trees. The olive leaves represent the olive trees. The olive trees are very important in Palestinian culture and heritage. Why is that? First of all, olive trees are very strong to the trees. They are known for their resistance, their old age, right? What does that represent? The Palestinians till this day. And then our last symbol are the bold roots. These um, represent the trade routes that were going all through Palestine to other countries. And then our last and one of our most important symbols, the key of return. The key of return started when the Palestinians that were kicked in 1948 and 1967, as we just talked about, they left and they closed their doors. They took the keys home. Why? Because one day when they come back, they're going to open their doors, they're going to go back and live how they used to live. Now, unfortunately, many of those grandparents, fathers, mothers, grandmothers were all either killed or they died. So what happens? They pass down this key to their families, to their lineage, right? So that one day someone is going to return. This represents the right of return for every single Palestinian, even if it's just me, you, or you visited Palestine or not. Us, the people that are here that never visited Palestine, we are called by a diaspora. Why? Because the state of Israel does not recognize us as Palestinians, because we weren't there, right? So that's the key of return. So we have some time for questions. Does anybody have? The sad truth, my dear friends, what is happening now is we don't have time. Uh, even even I, when I speak about people, everyone including me, nobody is having time uh, to take time to uh, take effort and uh, see what is really happening in the all over the world. It's, it's highly related to mankind and yeah, when, when, when mankind is in danger, it's our responsibility to get in and the issue gets resolved inshallah. So as you can see, uh, when I speak about mankind, it's not about a single person, a single human. It's about a collective humanity that is happening. They are in danger. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessing them with the best. However, we have to do our parts as well. And people, when I, when I spoke about time and people, it's, uh, it's like uh, many of them, like around 70% of the population don't know what is really happening and they are not sure why, why Israeli and Palestine have this issue. Uh, they don't have time to Google, they don't have time to know, they don't know what is exactly happening there. So it's our res responsibility as a human being, as a soul, we have to share awareness among people so that they also come to know what is really happening. And we cannot blame everyone that uh, we, they are not doing their part. It's our aware. It's our duty to share the awareness. So what we can do, what all we can do, we have to do. Whatever we can do, we have to do. And let's uh, let's see. Inshallah. So enter almost entire story of Palestine, Gaza. Everything is been highly depicted, highly demonstrated here in this event. And you can see here people were forcibly displaced. Uh, Palestinian people were forcibly displaced, 500 villages were destroyed. Every stuff is highlighting how Palestinians are getting resilience from what is really happening there. And inshallah, everything comes for the best. And I would highly recommend you to go on this, uh, highly recommend you to know more about this scenario, to know more about uh, Israeli and Palestinians. It's not about this decade or the past decade. It's a complete high uh, history is being there and I would highly recommend you to go to go there and learn it and yeah I would highly recommend you to share your views your thoughts in the comment section as well and Alhamdulillah I was able to put this video as well. Inshallah we will see in the next vlog and till then bye bye. Assalamu alaikum. Take care. Jazakallah khair.
you know if these are all children that have been killed recently? I'm not sure when they have done that one, however... Okay.